relying on her so much and use that as a crutch to not have something prepared. Uh, but bear with me, I'll try to make as much sense as I can. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. Uh, for a while, it's probably been like a week, I've been thinking about the goodness of God. You know, all the things that are happening, uh, not only here, but in other places, whether it's uh, man-made events or natural catastrophes. Every time that a Christian says, sending prayers, there's someone that says, what good does that do? And that shows you the lack of understanding that a lot of people have, not only about the power of prayer, but also about how good God is. Yeah. One thing that always comes to my mind when someone uh, that's a believer talks about who God is and is being challenged by an unbeliever, mm -hmm. it's when they come back and say, well, if God is so good, why is there poverty? Why is there hunger? Mm -hmm. Why is there war? Well, he does not cause any of those things. Those things are caused because man has lost sight of what is important. Who is our provider? Who is our uh, guide? And it's people that have their priorities put in the wrong places. You know, uh, the very first time the goodness of God is shown in the Bible, uh, it's in Genesis 1. It says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then verse 4 says, and God saw that the light was good. That's the first thing he spoke. Let there be light. And light came into existence, and he saw that it was good. Yeah. And from there, a chain of events started. And he kept speaking things into existence, and he kept seeing that it was good. Mm -hmm. Because everything he creates, everything he touches, he puts his hand on, it's good. Yes. Amen. Including us. Yes. yes. Because we are created in His image. And if we are created in His image, that means that we are good. Because yes. we were goodly created. Yeah. Uh, and there's all sorts of places in the Bible where it talks about God's goodness. For example, Psalm 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Uh, Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Yes. And there's all different scriptures that you can go and reference. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of children of mankind. You know, a lot of people when they encounter a situation, and this happens to me one time, it was, it was uh, I think it was, it was one of the most uh, enriching experiences that I've had in my path as a Christian, is when I come, came to this understanding. A lot of people think that when they lose something that they had, that it's good, it's because God took it away. Well, no, that's, I don't believe that's true. I believe that the reason why someone can lose something they have is because they don't know how to manage it properly. Uh, and I remember when I was going through my separation and then divorce, my therapist asked me, if this does not go your way, how, are you, how do you know you're not gonna come here and start cursing God and saying all these things about him and whatnot because what you've been praying for did not happen. And I said, because I know that he did not take this away from me. This is the result of poor decisions that I made through many years that are now manifesting this way. If what I have been wanting doesn't happen, 
I take full responsibility, but I do know that he's good. He's always been good to me. He will continue to be because he did not cost this to happen. Amen. Amen. And I think a lot of people need to come to that realization and, and we should be praying for those that believe but are struggling. We should also pray for those that do not believe. And I believe one of the main reasons why whenever something happened, whether it's a natural catastrophe, a man-made event or anything like that, and people say, we're sending prayers, I don't necessarily think that the prayer is uh, for this, the, the earthly situation to be resolved. We want that outcome to happen. But I, I think the true purpose of that prayer is for all of those that were affected in either directly or indirectly to have a come to Jesus moment yeah. that their eyes and their spirit, the heart of their spirit is open yes. so that whatever God is trying to do in that person's life uh, manifests and that person comes to that understanding. I started reading a book yesterday. Man, this is all tying out pretty good. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Uh, I started reading a book yesterday uh, that is about prayer warriors, and it, it said the title says, "How to Pray Your Way to Victory." And the lady that wrote it, she used to live in California, and she used to be, she used to live there when they used to have earthquakes very frequently, and she said that one time. She was in a building and there, uh, an earthquake happened and she couldn't get to a door frame to protect herself and she got trapped so she didn't know she was going to make it alive or, or anything like that and she said she did go out and it was after that moment that she came to know who the Lord was and she started uh, a relationship with him and all those things and whatnot. And then she says in the book that what happens after an earthquake is the exact same thing that happens in our lives if we do not build our foundation properly. Mm -hmm. And how do we build that foundation? Mm -hmm. Speaking the word of God into our lives. Yes. Yes. Why? Because we know that he is good. Yes. And if you build a house with good materials, the house is going to stand. That's right. Right. So if we build our spiritual house yep. with the good material that is the Word of God yep. because we know of His goodness and we know who He is. Yep. We know that our lives are going to stand whatever right. yep. battle that we're in because we're in a war with the yep. devil. Yep. Whether you know it or not, we are because He is the enemy of our Creator. So by default, He hates us That's because right. we are created in His image. That's right. So. Let's continue to pray for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter the circumstance. Let's pray that every person in this world, their, their eyes open, their hearts open, and that they come to experience the God that we know, yes. because we know He is good, yes. and let's watch this world be transformed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can you raise your hand? I was agreeing. That's really good. Um, I, I, it never ceases to amaze me how amazing he is. You know, we, we hear scriptures like, speak to the mountain and be thy removed, cast into the sea. And we get what he's trying to tell us that whatever the situation is, we can speak to it and it's taken care of. And then you hear another the another story where he's telling Peter to come to him and walk on the water, mm -hmm. and and that's awesome. And I think maybe it's just me, but I tend to think of them in, separately. Mm -hmm. His word is so intertwined. Mm -hmm. He said, "Greater than this will we do." Mm -hmm. He didn't. He could have just said, "Speak to the mountain." And your problems, you know, to, and it'll be taken care of. But he said, be cast into the sea. Yeah. And then he told Peter, come walk to me. On that sea, you can walk on it. Mm -hmm. They go together. Glory. I mean, so Woo. what Glory. he's saying is, all of our troubles, Glory. we are on top of. Mm -hmm. Glory. If we walk in who we know we are. Yes. And 
And yes, it's kind of an aha moment, but it's kind of a duh, because, mm -hmm. <laughs> but how amazing that he went, he, that he did it so intricately, that yes. it, it's so all intertwined. Yeah. It just amazes me, yeah. because if we can remember who we are, right. what he's done, we are walking on the yes, water we are. at all times, Jesus. and all of our mountains and all of our problems have been cast into yes. us. We have the victory, and we can do this if we Glory. just focus on Him. Yes. Glory. I just heard somebody say this the other day, and I thought it was really poignant, at least to me. And I think it should be for everybody, but instead of saying to somebody, how are you, because you know what you might get. <laughs> oh, well, you're pretty sure we should get Yeah, we should say, what's your confession? Yeah. Woo. yeah. It, it, it reframes, you know, our thinking so that we're not going to say sometimes the stuff that just immediately comes to mind because you're feeling it or you're going through it or whatever. And that ought to be something that just, you know, we're rolling around in our mind all the time. So if somebody else says to me, yeah. how are you? I I've got a confession here that I need to make, and it isn't mm -hmm. about me, and it's about him. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, if I say that to you, don't be offended. Just, yeah. Yes. Just, let me know what you're confessing, and then yeah. I can tell you what your problem might be. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Sorry. I, I thought that was a good word. I don't yes. know where, where I heard it now, but it, 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 was, yes. it made sense. Yes. yes. Yeah, we've been watching a lot of television. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I heard somebody say, that faith is a voice-activated system. Mm -hmm. And that keeps going over and over and over in my head. Mm -hmm. That's what, for two weeks, I keep thinking that because mm -hmm. it keeps bringing my focus into what comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I get caught up in, you know, day-to-day -day living, fixing it or doing this and thinking about this. Mm -hmm. and, but that keeps rolling through my head. Mm -hmm. So what it does, and I automatically just start speaking the word. Mm -hmm. What we speak out of our mouth, that is good or right. bad, Glory. is what we're going to get because it's all voice activated. Yes. 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 You know, just like what you were saying, why people say, oh gosh, you know, if God is so good, then how come, you know, how come Las Vegas, how come this thing, you know, that other catastrophe or horrible thing? But God gave man authority. Yes. We're good. Not just people that are saved, but everybody has some authority on this earth as a human being planted here. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting what we sow. Yeah, amen. You know, if you sow to the wind, you reap a whirlwind. So mm -hmm. our confession, because of that, our confession has to be in agreement with the Word of God. Yes. Because this earth, we're not of this earth, we're just in it. Right. But wherever we are, the kingdom is. Yes. If we're operating by those kingdom laws or the kingdom principles, which are agreement with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, we're acting like the world. And yeah. I don't mean it's because we've had a beer or we got mad at somebody or said a bad word or something. I mean it's because our confession isn't any different right. than theirs. Mm -hmm. right. So the kingdom doesn't advance except where people are advancing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that means you have to be in agreement with it. So yes, <laughs> we had a get together this morning and some great things came out of it. One of them that really has impressed me was the story of Gideon, which, you know, we know that Gideon laid out a fleece when the Lord told him, the mighty man of valor, of course, Gideon never saw himself in that, but he began to think about it, but he laid out a fleece and, you know, he asked that it be dry when the ground was all wet, and it was, and then he, then he had the audacity to ask again. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, can it be wet with the ground all dry? And it was. And what we come up with this morning is that the Lord is actually wanting to prove himself to yeah. us. We have been living on 2,000 years ago, 1,500 yes, years ago, yes. grandfather. Yes. God said, try me today. Yes. Yes. Try me today. 
So we had several little children there, uh, you know, fifth grade, fourth grade, and all that, and, and then Reagan's age all, all the way down. And the point that we wanted to make was, you know, I told them about some of my experiences, each one. <clears throat> but God wants them to have their own yes. memorial yes. experience. Yes. Yes. That when they, years from now, if there are years, and we all determined there probably aren't, but <clears throat> they will have a time to go back to in their own life. A real moment with God in their Amen. life. Amen. That when the enemy comes against them, they go back to that moment and say, No, I know that this happened. Do you think Gideon ever, ever, ever forgot that experience? Never. Did David forget his experience with the lion and the bear when he came up against uh, the bad guy, the big guy, the lion? <laughs> <laughs> no, he never forgot that God had been with him yes. every time in his life. Yes. And I think, what does the enemy want to do to us? He wants us to forget. Yes. To forget yes. all the times God's been there. And always he wants to isolate us that, well, oh, this never happened before. You know, this is, this is something that... Uh, no. Maybe it didn't happen to us, right. but it's happened to somebody. Right. 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 And that's why it's so imperative that we share yes. the things of God with, yes. with non-believers. Right. Yes. They're never going to believe if they don't hear it. If right. they don't hear what God has done. And you've got to rely on the fact that you've worked with them, you've done things with them, you've even drank beer with them, yeah. and they trust you. Right. You're not going to tell them some story that's just... Totally out. Right. So that all of a sudden you have their attention when you say, you know what? God did this for me. Right. I, I'm telling you, brother, it happened. It was real. Yeah. It wasn't something I read. It happened. Right. Now you've got their attention. And then you challenge them. Try God. Yeah. Right. Try it. Don't believe me. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell right. you right now, he is dying to do. <laughs> To expose himself to the world, right. but they don't. The, the world right now wants nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. They think. Mm -hmm. They right. think they don't want anything. Right. To do with it. It's because they haven't been challenged. Right. They haven't, nobody has really offered it. Amen. 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 Right. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> As a growing time of the Lord, because I got hooked on this song by the newsboys, the spirit thing. And I look at all this stuff I'm going through with these animals, and it is a spirit thing. Mm -hmm. And if we would just take five or ten minutes a day to realize where the spirit of God is active among us and just say, you know, one of the things that I like to do at work, and, and a lot of people don't understand, is I like to encourage others to do better. And if we could do something to encourage somebody to have a better day, that's all it takes. And this has been on my heart for months. Like, you know, we're in the spirit of God. It's time that we use our God-given talents to help somebody or do something that we haven't done before because you don't know whether you're always going to have the chance to express yourself but you always want it to be on the open up to see what God has for you and that's a big message for me and I've never even said that and now we have a friend that Mike's known for years and it's on my heart that Steve Savage has um Liver cancer. Liver, uh, yeah, bladder cancer. And I guess that we prayed for this brother. Right. I didn't even know this brother. Mm -hmm. And my friend told me when I was Jesus. in the chamber in the bar last night yes. that we really prayed for Steve because then yep. he doesn't know what to do and his wife 
been not at the senior center for a, a week, and this has been laid on my heart for a, a couple months. But I just, but remember that the Spirit of God is alive and active. Amen. And I look at that, and, and I'm still hearing that song, and it makes me dance every morning. And I, I've never touched me before if that happens. There you go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, I, I would like um, prayer for Leah. Um, she said, been feeling very good sometimes. And just uh, prayer for her. And also, uh, my daughter out in Oregon, uh, just to pray that God really uh, work in her life. You know, uh, when we're on the phone, one thing we always encourage each other is, is to keep praying one for another. Mm -hmm. um, I know with the things that's happened in the news, uh, Las Vegas and different things that, you know, that's why it's always good to have communication between one another, you know, because we assume if somebody goes off mm -hmm. whether it's a concert or work or you're assuming they're coming home, you know, mm -hmm. you always think that and say, I'll see you but in reality, we don't know that and, and to tell them you love them, you care for them you know, that they mean so much in your life it's always good to leave with that memory because what always goes through my mind when I see that is if if somebody had an argument with that person that day, you know, just before they left, and then they then they weren't able to come back, you know, how that kind of sticks with them. And I just think that each morning we get up, we be thankful for each of our family members, yes. and, and pray for them every day. Pray that God watches over them every single day. You know, I'm in a business where I know my life can change at any second. I mean, when you're doing driver's ed, 40-ton vehicle, and, and, you, and, you, and you're in there and, and you realize that, I mean, a train, you know, somebody pull out in front of you. But I'm always so thankful how God day after day always, brings, you know, brings us back home. So I just want to uh, be thankful for that. And then next Saturday night in the Sunday morning, I'll be doing Valley. And I always ask for prayer that we always get a good spot because it, it does make a difference getting in and out of there. Oh, yeah. And we've been really blessed this little season so far. <laughs> Everything's worked out great, so I thank the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hi. Uh, to lift up Cindy, she went and had some oral surgery done uh, last Wednesday, and uh, um, she's still feeling the effects from it and stuff, so just pray for her total healing. Uh, second of all, praying for uh, Suzanne and Michael, who are out of town uh, and, uh, vacationing. Uh, they come back safely. They're in Las Vegas by chance. Uh, just pray that they pray over that place while they're there. Uh, Sarah and others that are missing from the worship team this morning. In fact, all the people that are missing here this morning, just pray and watch over them and speak to their heart this morning. If they're watching the broadcast, there's uh, several, there are a couple of people watching right now that the Lord blesses them through the broadcast. And last but not least, uh, two of our young ladies prayed for the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit two Sundays ago. Just pray for the continuance of that prayer that it will manifest and they will be just totally on fire for the Lord like I believe it's coming. Amen. 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 Sheila. Um, my friend Karen's father-in-law had minor surgery and he winded up having a stroke in the process. And so I told her we would definitely pray for her and the family. His name is Henry. Evelyn wants to thank everybody for prayers. Uh, her leg, she says, I know when you guys pray because it's almost like instantaneously that at that hour that walk. things start manifesting. And, um, she's still not really able to walk, so continue <coughs> to remember her in prayer and thank you for the prayers. Uh, my daughter and Jayla are heading out to Oregon um, to see Shannon next week, and she's really scared about traveling alone with a two-year-old, so <laughs> just pray that, you know, God put people on her path to help her with the whole process and that they have a good and a healing time while they're out there, as well as just continued healing of her mind from all the things that she has struggled with. Um, yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, I, we, need, we have to pray for Corey as much as I don't want to. He got 25 years, um, so that means maybe they'll serve, what, four to seven years? But during this time that Andrea can really move forward and um, and get herself in a good position. Amen. And that he will leave her alone and keep sending packages and stuff. And, uh, we just don't want to accept anything. Amen. 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 All right.
one quick update about my family. I know that we've talked about this a couple times. Uh, things are looking better uh, right now. The house where my aunt is, the power came back, so she'll be able to use all her medical equipment without any issues. Right now, about 15% of the island is back uh, on the power grid, and about 50% have uh, potable water from mm -hmm. the water company. So we're still trying to figure out if they're going to come here or not. Uh, I know some refuse to do it altogether. Others are like, well, it depends on how we play it out. So hopefully it all works itself out. Um, but the one good thing that I'm seeing that's coming out of this whole thing, I don't know if you guys know of this company called Tesla. Mm -hmm. They do electric cars. And uh, I've been in one, they're awesome. Uh, but the CEO actually said that he can get an entire solar farm with batteries to power the entire island with no issues. It was up to the governor and the people. The governor already met with him and it seems like it's going to go forward. Yes. So if it happens, it's going to be a game changer because one of the main things that is contributing to the economic crisis is the monopoly that the power company has because the majority of the people that work in it, it's just people that got in because they know someone inside, not because they have their, the skills. Right. So every uh, power project that has been proposed to use either seawater or solar power, they shut it down because they don't know how to deal with it and they'll be out of a job. So hopefully this will take care of that situation. I don't want to see people without jobs, but you gotta move forward and make it better for everybody. All right. Amen. Uh, anybody else? Okay, let's stand and go to prayer this morning. Father, we thank you this morning for bringing us to be gathered here in your name. We thank you, Lord, because we have been blessed with experiences your goodness and know who you are, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all the revelation that you have given us, that have, that have showed us your way, Father, have showed us the way and the path that we are to walk. We have a different understanding, Lord, of everything that goes around us because we have been enlightened with your truth, Lord, to be able to see the truth in the circumstances that surround us. Lord, we thank you, Father, for making us vessels of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the, the mandate to go out and teach people of who you are and to show them your goodness. We pray, Lord, that you continue to give us this boldness to go out and declare your word, Lord. We know that there are two kinds of prayer. The prayer that we come together and declare your word in agreement, Father, with what you have said. But there's also the individual prayer that we say in which we enter in a direct line with you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for giving us both those opportunities and every opportunity to be able to pray for not only ourselves, but those who love us and other people as well. We thank you, Lord, because you have given us the power and authority to speak your word into this world and declare it and have it manifest. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done for us. Father, right now we bring all of the needs that have been presented to you this morning. We pray that all the people that are in fear in their lives continue to improve and get better. Those that are sick, sick receive your healing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for those that are traveling, that you continue to keep them safe, and they continue to expand your kingdom, Lord, wherever they set foot. Because wherever they set foot is holy land. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us all the opportunities to be in your presence, to speak to you, to speak to all the people, to show them who you are, for your light to shine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, to bring us together, continue to declare your word for you to manifest, and your kingdom continue to expand. Oh, thank you, Father, for your presence can be felt in this place. We know that in an instant, everything can change.
Father, how you embrace us every day as your children. What you have called us to be, Lord. Thank you for looking over our past and for making us new creatures in you, Lord, by transforming our hearts and our spirits and our lives. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, because we have been born again. We are now new creatures in you, Lord. your cell phone with you. Uh, make sure that some vibrator is turned off. Okay, this coming Friday, October 13th, we'll have our Eastern Gatehouse of Prayer. Uh, what are you hearing? What am I specifically hearing is uh, I got woke up yesterday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, and again, this morning, I posted some of this morning stuff, uh, Facebook and stuff. But yesterday morning, uh, for the bride of Christ to rise up to take her place. Uh, a lot of people are trying to blame the current administration and the spiritual realm da, 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 because uh, of all these catastrophes that have started, started since uh, the beginning of the year. They're trying to blame, blame, blame. <clears throat> if you remember um, at that time, who was rising up against the, the person, the people we elected in? It was the uh, satanic, it was the witch hunts, it was spelling out curses, everything else going on in the situation. And I, it might be a little bit crazy for some that are listening, but that's okay, I'm supposed to talk it out. We're going to come together and bind those curses. Because what happened is the curses were released out to those whom they said they were going to release it on, but what had in fact had happened is it went out and manifested and it's coming down on those people and those people around the people that elected those people in. The spirit of hate, all this stuff has been manifested from those curses. Okay? To deny that saying is uh, the devil has no power in this, and, and that the prince of the powers of the air, air and the earth right now doesn't exist. Well, it does exist. But the body of Christ needs to take her place and reclaim her territories. It needs to reclaim the atmosphere. It needs to reclaim the things that the Lord has called us to do. Many have fallen asleep, and it's time for the church, it's time for the bride of Christ to wake up. Now's the time. We're coming together to pray. What did it take for the Holy Spirit to fall upon the apostles and stuff when they met in the upper room? It took prayer. It took coming together. It took unity. And this is what this is about. I need all those that hear my voice to be a part of this, because it's going to take everyone in this room, everyone that's watching the broadcast, everyone that will watch the recording, it's what it will take. As they said many years ago, what good could come out of Bethlehem? And I see many people that are in large gatherings in this area and stuff like that, look at this little church and say, what good could come out of this little church? Mm -hmm. I say to you, mm -hmm. what came out of Bethlehem mm -hmm. will come out of here. Come this Friday night. Amen. Amen. All right, October 21st, church fall cleanup. Uh, who, you want to talk about it? I'm all about talking about it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Inside and out. Time. So anybody that can do it, uh, I guess, nine o'clock. Okay. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. That's Saturday, right? Saturday. Okay. Yeah, cartoons are over. <laughs> you do, I record you mine. <laughs> All right. Okay. Before we uh, go into the offering, I just want to say the Financial Peace University class. Uh, it's over, and it was a great success. I'm very excited for all the people that were here. Uh, you could, you could see not only in the spirit the things that were happening, but looking at their faces at the end and seeing the hope yes. in the way they were looking and talking about everything that we went through. 
I would not change that experience for anything. Uh, and I'm already planning the next one. It's going to be in March. Uh, because of some circumstances, it's going to be my last one. Uh, at some point next year, Kelly and I will actually be departing the church since we are moving. Uh, we're going to start going to another church. So I will need someone to uh, coordinate that class with me. So if you're interested in doing it, you're more than welcome to do so because I will need to hand over the reins to someone else. But I guarantee you it is a very rewarding experience if you get to do it either as a student or as a coordinator. You will be blessed no matter what. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, Don and John, could you take an offering, please? <clears throat> and John, can you say the blessing, please? Lord, we just come today to give thanks and celebrate, Lord, your goodness to us. We lift up all these requests and needs and your blessings upon people, Lord God, as we give unto you in this offering, Lord, and to your church and your blessing. The man of God and to this assembly, Lord God, that we receive today what you have for us and apply it, God, to our hearts and our minds. And be ever mindful, Lord, to walk in your ways and lift you up and celebrate the, the goodness of you, Lord God, and the love that you put in our hearts for you and for one another. Help us, God, to grow and every day just to be walking in the truth and shedding the light and being. Light bearers of thy glorious truth in thy holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Alright. Well, let's worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, come forth. I want to thank Roberto for spending in last weekend for the city and I had a chance to get away. And, um, it seemed like the more I tried to get away, the Lord, more the Lord spoke to me about things. Um, and uh, I'm proud of Brother Roberto going through the things he's gone through in the last couple of years, watching him grow. Um, and you all have been pouring into him. Thank you so much for pouring into him. Uh, he's a brother, a fond brother. Uh, I'll never, never have you out of my spirit. Um, he's going, but he's not going to be leaving the kingdom situation because I know he's carrying with him a mantle that the Lord has placed upon him. Um, and I know that the Lord had influence upon him to reach out to the nations. Uh, I believe, and the Lord is speaking to me right now, that you will be talking to nations, mm -hmm. that you will even be going to nations. Mm -hmm. Not in Puerto Rico, but those of Hispanic uh, uh, languages, those of foreign languages, you will be speaking to nations. The things that you have listened to uh, from Colombia, mm -hmm. uh, those worship times and stuff like that, the Lord has just put a seed in you that will grow now, that will grow now. It just seems like you're in, our, in the palm of our hand right now, uh, like a bird, and the Lord is saying, it's time for him to take flight, mm -hmm. okay? And when he goes, he will be flying and soaring with the eagles. You will be soaring with the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. just say now that the Lord has blessed you. He has restored you yes, for a purpose and a plan for His glory and His kingdom. And it's coming yes, forth glory. in the name of Jesus. Yes. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All your promises. God. Yes. Ready, James? Ready, James? Jesus. You're going to change your mind? Hallelujah. All right. You ready, Jay? Truck sitting, truck sitting on the entrance ramp. Let's go.
the Holy Spirit. That prayer is still. That prayer is now. Those of you that have received that gift, will you release it in this room right now? Release it. Come on, church, release it. Let these younger ones understand. Let them be taught right now the experience of what you had. the baptism of the Holy Spirit let me just put it to you as simply as I can you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit the same way you receive salvation it's a gift speaking in tongues is what you do the baptism of the Holy Spirit is what God does if you wait for God to speak in tongues, it ain't gonna happen. It really is that, it's not complicated. It's not some weird 
you know, ethereal, otherworldly thing. It is spiritual, but you are a spirit. If you're born again, if you have accepted Christ, you are a spirit being. Yes. You determine. The scripture yes. says that you shall speak with other tongues. Yes. As the spirit gives the unction. That doesn't mean all of a sudden you get goosebumps and you start speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues anytime you want to. You have spirit. You have authority. Yes. All you have to do is do it. Yes. You say, well, that just, that, that just sounds like me. Yes. yes. Because speaking in tongues is not the Holy Spirit. It's the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit. So by faith, yes. you yes. speak in tongues. Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. You, you have to speak in tongues and you do it by faith the same way you yes. receive salvation. So you don't have to feel anything. You don't have to be overwhelmed by some thing or, or experience. You just do it. Yes. You just speak in tongues. Because I'll just tell you, every service from the time worship begins until I get up here, I'm speaking in tongues. Yes. That's all I'm doing. Yes. I can't sing. Mm. But I can't speak in tongues, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I do that because it, it, it gets my spirit in tune with God even though my flesh is, I'm, I might be thinking other stuff. Right. In fact, most of the time I am. Right. But my spirit and my body don't have to be connected in the sense that my mind doesn't have to agree with everything I'm praying when I'm praying in tongues. That's the reason for praying in tongues is to get your mind out of that thing. Yes. Because your mind is going to think all kinds of stuff like, well, you know, I, that's, not, that's, that's not God. That's just me gibbering and jabbering and la 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 whatever. But you are the one that has to speak in tongues. Yes. Don't keep pushing it off for some weird thing to happen so that you can speak in tongues. It is the most natural thing in the world for somebody who's born again. Yes. Amen. You just do it. Yeah. Amen. The Spirit has given you the unction. It doesn't mean that, you know, whenever I'm going to pray in tongues, I have to have something happen to me. No, once I'm born again, once I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit... I can do it anytime I want to. Amen. And it's a way for God to speak through us by the Spirit. It's Spirit to Spirit. It's a way for you to connect with God without intellectual connections. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I promise you, it, you'll see the results of it. You'll, you'll, you'll see things change. And the beauty of it is you'll know that it was God because you didn't even know what you were saying. You didn't know what you were praying. You know what was on your heart. You know what you were feeling. But we don't know how to pray a lot of times because we don't see the end from the beginning. We just think if this thing would happen, then that would fix all my problems. Well, sometimes when that thing happens, it creates more problems than you ever dreamed of. Because it was what you thought was going to be the thing to fix. But it's only the Spirit that can do it. So I just encourage you. Whether, you, whether it happens in a church service, where it happens in your own home, in your bedroom, in the bathroom, it can happen anywhere if you'll just yield to it. Yeah. If you'll just do it. Yeah. And if I can tell you this, the same thing will happen to you when you speak in tongues that happened to you when you got born again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The devil will immediately come and say, yeah. you're not saved. Yeah. I mean, come on, look, look at what you did. Look at what you thought. Look yeah. at what you said. You're not saved. Yeah. Well, he'll do the same thing when you pray in tongues yeah. or when you speak in tongues. He'll say, that was you. That wasn't God. Do you hear how stupid that sounded? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Then what you need to do is say to the spirit or to the devil, let me hear you do it. Yeah. 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 Let me hear your tongues. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So just I'm just saying, this is not a hard thing to do. God's already done everything. All you have to do is yield to it. All yeah. you have to do is speak. Yeah. Let it come. Yes. Whatever it sounds like, it doesn't matter because... The more you, it's just like speaking English. Thank you. The more you do it, the more fluent you become yes, in it. Yes. So we can alter the sound of things. I tell you, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I, I did this. La, 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 la. That was my speaking in tongues when I got, when I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. But it could have been fluent Greek or something, you know, for all that it mattered. Mm -hmm. yeah. God heard my faith. Yes. God heard me believe. And act on it. And that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. God's done all the hard stuff. All you've got to do is yield this member. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And it can change everything. Yes. It'll give you a whole different perspective.
Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, worship team. Amen. Just be aggressive when it comes to the Holy Spirit and just go get it. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Sheila is, is uh, teaching uh, kids down there today, and I appreciate that she stepped up. And uh, we'd appreciate anybody else that would like to be a part of it. You don't have to feel like if you do it once, you're locked in on a regular schedule, but uh, it would be a blessing. That the, the young people even need, you know, some variation from time to time. And so uh, you could be a real blessing to them. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to kind of continue from Wednesday night. For those of you that were here Wednesday, uh, I was talking about some things that, well, somebody, somebody had told me this. This is secondhand information, but I respect the source. So somebody had said that uh, they wanted to hear or they wanted to preach or hear just what the Bible says. <clears throat> and uh, I, I mean, I understand what they're saying, but I don't think they do. But that's, that's another thing. Um, you know, the, the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. How many of you uh, had looked back and say 20 years ago or 30 years ago or whatever, my 10 years ago, six months ago, you read a scripture and you thought, well, okay, I don't really get it, but it's, you know, it's the Bible, so. And then at some other point, you read that scripture and all of a sudden something opened up. Like you didn't even, you had no idea it was there. You couldn't imagine why, how come I didn't see that before? Why, how come it's so obvious now and it was so not obvious before? This is, this, Jesus said the words that I speak, they're spirit and they're life. So they're more than just types written words on a page. Amen. There is life in this. It, there is spiritual life. Yes. And so it goes below. It goes beneath. Now, I'm not saying what's on the surface isn't real. You can read this for historic uh, yes. truth, for grammatical truth, you, for all of this, and, and you would be right. It wouldn't be wrong. But I'm just saying there's way more to this than that. And that's one of the reasons he gives us the Spirit. So that we can connect with His Spirit. There's a Spirit in His life, right? So I want to I want to just talk about some things uh, this morning to, to to make this clear. Jesus was the Word, right? And that Word became flesh. In other words, it took on life. Yes. And that's what this should do. I mean, it, it should do that. I'm not I'm not saying this in a condemning way. I'm just saying it it has the potential. Every word in here has the potential to bring life, to, yes. to come alive. Yes. And for most of us, we've experienced that at some point, like I said before. Yep. You read something, it's just, okay, it's words and it looks good, it's almost poetic maybe. But then you read it and go, wow, that's, you know, that's real, that's alive, that's something, it resonates with my spirit, it, make, it makes sense, okay? Right. Well, that's what God's trying to do. He wants to speak to us in a way that it's spirit to spirit, not just rules and regulations. This was the problem that Israel had. When, the, when they received the Torah, when they received the Word of God, they didn't have the Spirit of God, so that all they had was the Word, the, the legal aspect of it. And so it literally killed. Now you can read stuff in here today. If you want to just take the surface of it, I would tell that individual, then you, you know, it's, uh, we've probably all heard this before too, but if, if we really just took this for the surface, then this, I'd be looking at people out here with one eye, one, eye, one hand, one leg. Why? Because it says, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. My eye, I'm telling you, I've looked at some stuff that I shouldn't have looked at. I've thought about stuff that I should I, it, You know, I ought to be walking around here with a cane with no eyes, amen. And, you know, your hands and, you know, if your arm, a hand offend you, you'll cut it off. I'd leave one of these and, yeah. you know, running into everything. But I'm just saying, that's how kind of simplistic 
we can make this and we miss everything and all we have left is a bunch of crippled, angry, frustrated people that never really connect with God. And it's like the devil, you know, he, he, he thinks he, he, you know, he's, he's an influence. And I heard this say this, this morning that yes, he's in the world. There's no question about that. But we don't need to give him more credit than he deserves. He thinks. He tries to impress us and make us believe that he's got the same power God has. He, that he can somehow do things to us uh, that we can't do anything about. That we have no, It reminds me, there's a, <laughs> there's a commercial. I love it. And I don't even know what the commercial is because I get so caught up in the act that I don't know what they're selling, but it's hilarious. There's this uh, concert. I mean, it's a, an orchestra. And this guy that plays the triangle, how many of you know the triangle doesn't really play a major part in most symphonies? But he's out there, you know, he's like a rock star and he's going down the ground. Ding, 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 you know, and all this stuff. And, that, and I'm, just, I'm laughing, it's hysterical to me because I'm thinking, this guy really thinks he's got something going on here. You know, he's doing the whole thing. And that's the devil. Yeah. He just thinks he's the center of all of it, you know, that he is the thing. And, and really, he's just the triangle that you just hear a little here and there. And it's not that big a deal if, it, if you don't hear the triangle in a symphony orchestra. You don't go home going, oh, man, what a de I'm so s disgusted and I'm so depressed that I didn't get to hear the triangle. But the devil has that way of trying to impress us that he is the center of everything, that he's the focus. Right. But he's not. No. He's just not. No. But he tries to convince us that he is to keep our focus from the goodness of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God onto the negative. Right. He's kind of like the news. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what mood you're in when you turn it on. You'll be depressed if you leave it on for very long because it's just always negative stuff. So anyway, praise the Lord. The Spirit gives life. Yes. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, so, Roberto, if you will, let's start with Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. Whew, I've got to start working out more. <laughs> <laughs> or some. Okay, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. So, if we have spiritual ears, we ought to be listening with them. Mm -hmm. What the Spirit is saying, because you're not going to hear what the Spirit is saying with the natural ear. Right. If you could, then the whole world would already be saved, and we wouldn't have the problems we have. Okay? All right, now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I want to read verses 1 through 11, Roberto. 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 1 through 11. Okay. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all drink, or excuse me, did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that flowed, uh, that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. And these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are to come. And that word world, and we've talked about this uh, over the last few weeks several times, but that word actually translates age. So it's not the end of existence. It's not the end of the globe. It's the end of an age. The age being the old covenant. Okay? 
So keep that in mind as we move on. So now here, what we're looking at here, the exodus and the wilderness journey is what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians 10. Mm -hmm. All of those things happened to them, he said, as examples. Now those people that were under Moses mm -hmm. and the first exodus were an example to those who were in Corinth when Paul wrote this. Mm -hmm because they were the generation upon whom the end of the age had come. All right, remember Jesus said that the, the kingdom has come near you, it shall be in you. Well, it's, it's there now, it's there. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And Paul's telling them about that for their admonition so that they would understand that that age has ended and we've moved into a new covenant. It's the covenant of grace. So, God was dismantling a religious system that had made slaves and people in bondage and not sons. Mm -hmm. So, the system, the Old Covenant, never made anybody a son to God. It made everybody a slave or a servant right. to God. Right. Amen? So, the Old Testament is the shadow. Mm -hmm. The New Testament is the reality. The Old Testament, Jesus is concealed. In the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. So if you took this individual's thought that I mentioned earlier, and you, you know, went on with that, how, how would you ever find Jesus in the Old Covenant? It would just be, it would be a book you just throw away. Mm -hmm. There would be no reason for it for us who are born again. Right? Right, right? So, just because they couldn't see that Jesus was there, doesn't mean God wasn't trying to reveal it. Right. So, I want to compare the Exodus, the Exodus from Egypt, that was led by Moses, and the Exodus from the religious bondage of law and legalism that was led by yes. Jesus. Glory. Jesus, Moses was a type of Jesus. They're all through the Bible, and I, so I won't take the time to go start pointing them all out, but just I'll show you a few as we move along here. And show you how, if every word that could be word or written that Jesus said, and every act that he did, if they were all written, right. he's, the, the scripture says it would fill all the books in all the world. Mm -hmm. So he did a whole lot more than this. I believe yes. that the Holy Spirit Jesus. specifically chose certain things that Jesus said and certain acts that Jesus did to help us understand it or to reveal it. But it is by no means is it everything that he said, did, or, you know, acted on. So the name of Jesus is the equivalent of the Old Testament name Joshua or Yeshua. If you'd lived in the time of Joshua, you wouldn't have called him Joshua, you'd have called him Yeshua. That was his Hebrew name. Well, Jesus is a Greek translation of that, or Christos is, Jesus, we say in Spanish, and, and it, but it's, it's the word Yeshua. That's what he would have been called. That's what Jesus would have been called in his day. Now, Moses led the children of Israel out with a rod, right? But Joshua, or Yeshua, led the people in with a mercy seat. So Moses is carrying the staff, the rod. Mm -hmm. Joshua has the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat that goes before them, okay? So that's the com first comparison. Everything that they saw, everything that I'm talking about under the Old Covenant, everything they saw by, the, by type and shadow under Moses in that first exodus, Jesus would become the fulfillment, the very substance of the type and the shadow. Yes. As a matter of fact, after he, after he was resurrected, after his resurrection, Jesus walked, the scripture says, on the road to Emmaus with his disciples. Mm -hmm. And beginning with the law and the prophets, beginning with the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, amen, he told them all things concerning himself. Because they didn't have any new covenant. There hadn't been one letter written here yet. Mm -hmm. That's right. All they had was the Torah. All they had was the Old Covenant. And Jesus began to explain or expound to them the law and the prophets 
And in those, He was revealing Himself. Now, what's interesting is they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Why? Because the Word came alive. All of a sudden, it, had, it became spiritual truth and not just legalism or rules or regulations. All of a sudden, those things came alive in a person. Yes. And they said, wow, man, it was amazing what we felt when He said that. So just imagine Jesus speaking to them, the slain lamb, the manna, the serpent on the pole, uh -huh. the Red Sea crossing, uh -huh. the baptism in the cloud. Remember? Uh -huh. Pillar of cloud by day and night. So those were all pictures of the redemption completed in my death, burial, and resurrection. Uh -huh. And they're going, whoa. They're, they're doing on a bigger scale what we do when we go, oh, I never, I never saw that. Yeah. It just, the Word came alive to them. Yes. All that old covenant, all that law that had just been rigid, yeah. legalistic, do this, do this, do yes. this. All of a sudden, it wasn't that anymore. All of a sudden, it was a person. All of a sudden, it had a whole, whole different meaning. Yes. So, we come to the crossing of the Jordan River. Now, these people are at the, at the Jordan. And Joshua was leading the people into a physical promised land. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember, they came back, they had grapes, they had all this stuff. They had physical stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said, we saw these huge houses, these, these great orchards, these fields of, of crops. And, and it's all there, sure enough, just like you said. But there's, there's a problem. Because mm -hmm. there's obstacles to this stuff. Although God said, I'll give it to you. Now they're arguing with what they're seeing instead of what God was saying. Exactly. Amen. So, so they, under that, new, co under that uh, new covenant, Jesus is leading us into a spiritual promised land. Yes. Amen. And it's called rest. Yes. Amen. It's the reality of what they were trying to discover in the natural. Amen. God's going to do this. You don't have to do it. You just got to believe God. Yes. And if they would have, they'd have had everything yes. because it started out all right yes. when they believed and did what God told them to do. Amen. Yes. So Hebrews 4 says the gospel was preached to them, to these people way back. It was preached to them, but they didn't enter into this promise, yeah. into their promised land right. because of unbelief. And it says, because the Word wasn't mixed with faith. They had the Word, but it was just words. Because they didn't exercise any faith in it. Amen? So it wasn't mixed with faith, so they failed to enter His rest. That happened. It, can ha it happens today. It's yeah. still happening. Yeah. The Word is just words. Yeah. Yeah. And we have lots of other words that, that disagree with this. Again, turn on the news. Mm -hmm. Listen to other, you know, non-believers. Yeah. Just live in this world yeah. separated from the reality of Christ. Yeah. And there's this contradiction all the time. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The scripture says, till the death of Moses. Till Moses died. Mm -hmm. Now the book of Joshua opens. And this opens with this scripture. Now Moses, my son... Or Moses, my servant, I should say, is dead. That's the way it starts. Mm -hmm. And there's a new leader, Yeshua. When you see the priest, and here's what they say. I'm just paraphrasing because we'll get into it here in a little bit. But basically what, what uh, Joshua was told, when you see the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord step into the River Jordan, you're going to know it's time to cross over, to get into that promised land. Mm -hmm. All right? Now remember, there's, there's two stories going on here. There's the natural that's trying to tell us a greater, more deeply truthful story of the reality. Okay, so Joshua, look at, let's go here, uh, Roberto. Joshua chapter 3 and 11 through 17. Joshua 3, 11 through 17. And see, I, in fact, I was saying Wednesday night, we shouldn't be afraid 
of seeing something we haven't seen before. Look, we have the Holy Spirit. We are saved. We are born again. So even if I were to see something that isn't really there, if it was just me, my intellect or my, my own you know, contriving, it, I'm not going to go to hell because of that. God will move me onto the right path. If I deviate from that truth, listen, I, I don't know about anybody else here, but I believed a lot of different stuff over the years. Not stuff that was going to send me to hell, but just things that weren't going to necessarily help me to live the life that God really wanted me to live. So, yeah, it's possible to, to, to see something the wrong way. But the beauty of the scripture is it will, def it will define itself. It will interpret itself. So if you see a truth and you feel like, oh, that's, I, I believe that's true. It's not hard to find out if you're right or not. Because all you got to do is start looking around in the scripture. And if it doesn't validate itself in any other way, then you figure, okay, well, that was just me. I was, you know, thinking. But if you can start finding witnesses throughout the scripture, then you know, hey, whoa, I'm onto something here. God, the Holy Spirit's trying to teach me something, trying to reveal more of himself to me. Amen. So here he says, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth, the Lord of all the earth, passeth over before you into Jordan. Now, this is the old covenant, right? Behold, okay, now, the, okay, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth before thee, or you, into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve men out of the tw tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. In other words, it'll be like a dam was built. The waters will roll back, and on this side, they'll just stop. There just won't be any more water. You can st stand on dry ground. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all of his banks all the time of the harvest, at the time of the harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam. That is beside Zeratan and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off and the people passed over right against Jericho. Praise the Lord. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. One translation of that says, the waters rolled back all the way to the city of Adam. Mm. Praise the Lord. So compare that with Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verses 13 through 17. So we're going to compare this with the new covenant. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness, or truth. And then he suffered him, or allowed him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So John the Baptist just stepped into the Jordan River. Now, if you remember, John the Baptist is the son of Zechariah. Remember in the temple, it was Zechariah who... Uh, had the vision and so forth and he was told about the angel tells him and then he starts to question it and he becomes a deep mute for however long it was until John was born and then he says his name will be John because they thought they named him Zechariah or something after him right so he names him John because that's what the Spirit of the Lord had spoken so John is a son of a priest you understand the Old Covenant the priests all came out of the tribe of Levi. If you were a Levi, you were going to be a priest. You were going to be operating because that's the only people that could do it. It was the Levitical priesthood. Or, you know, sometimes called the Aaronic priesthood. But that, that was the tribe that he was in. Okay, so John the Baptist steps into the river. He's the son of Zechariah, who was a priest after the order of the Levi's or the Levitical priesthood. So that would make John... 
the heir to the Levitical priesthood, would it not? Just by logic, just I'm just saying, just simple common sense would tell you John was a priest. Yes. In the mind of God, if he hadn't, even if he wasn't functioning in the temple itself, in the mind of God, he was a priest because he was a Levite. Yes. And that was the law. And they are still under the law here. Yes, they are. Okay, so now we've, we've got a priest standing in the Jordan River. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just as Jesus steps down into the Jordan, who, by the way, is the real Ark of the Covenant? Yes. Yes. The Old Testament Ark was a shadow or the type. <coughs> Jesus is the fulfillment of that. Yes. I'm telling you, it made me just want to shout, and I got goosebumps on top of goosebumps right now, only because of the truth of it. Yes. And see, if we just want to read through this and say, well, you know, I'm going to tell you a story from the gospel. We're, we're just, that's fine if you're dealing with brand new believers or little kids, you're trying to get them to understand the, the basis, basic truth of this, that it's real, that God exists. But there's so much more that He gives us the Spirit to understand so that we can relate to them, so that we can interact with them, so that we can know, hey, He is in me. He's talking to me. He's dealing with me. And however He wants to do that, it doesn't matter. That it does, If you hear it here the first time and you go, well, that was just because Nathan said it. No, it's the truth. You, you would reject it if it wasn't true, if it didn't resonate with your spirit. So, John is this heir to the Levitical priesthood. He's down in the water. He's standing in the Jordan River. And here comes the Ark of the Covenant. Yep. Now, again, to have a shadow, you have to have an object standing in the light. Amen? I can see it right there. Yep. Well, if you follow the, the shadow long enough, eventually you're going to come to the object that's casting the shadow, right? Yes. That's what the Bible is for. Yes. We have types and shadows. And if we follow them, if we're... You know, if we're serious about it and we'll follow, it'll lead us to the object that is casting the shadow. We'll see what this... The shadows are not important. The shadows only tell us there is an object somewhere, someplace, that is casting that shadow. And that's what I'm interested in. I don't care about the shadow. I want to know where the shadow is coming from. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's why we, you can live to be 120 years old and never get filled up and just bored and completely understand everything in here. Because the more you look, I, I've said a lot of times, it's like the Matrix. Anybody ever see that movie? That's what it's like. The more you look, the more there is. The, the, the deeper you go, the deeper you find out it goes. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's only limited by our hunger for it. It's only limited by our desire to find Him. When you seek me with all your heart, then you'll find me. He's not talking about out here somewhere fasting for 30 days or 40. He's talking about right here. Yes. You, if you come looking, you're going to find. Yes. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. So now we've got a priest standing in the Jordan River. The ark comes in. And he is our mercy seat. Our propitiation is what the scripture says. He is our propitiation. That word, you can look it up for yourself in the Strong's Concordance. That is the carrier of the covenant. The ark is the carrier of the covenant, right? Jesus, our propitiation, that word translates mercy seat. It translates literally mercy seat. So no, it's not any accident then that the waters were cut off clear back to a city called Adam. Yes. Praise the Lord. Because of Jesus' redemptive work, yes. the flow of death that comes from Adam was cut off. Yes. Clear back to Adam. Yes. We've got a second Adam. We've got the wow. last Adam. Yes. The ark. Yes. The promise of God. Yes. That I'll remember your sins no more. Your iniquities I will remember. And I'll, ca I will, I'll cast them as far as the east is to the west. Like Tammy said, the mountain goes into the sea. Why the sea? Because you're never going to find it now. It'll, it'll never be known. Right. It'll never be exposed. So at Jesus' baptism, heaven opens yep. and it begins to invade earth. Yep. And it'll never close again. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go back to Joshua again. Joshua chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Now this stuff just freaks me out. I mean, I just... It makes me see Jesus, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, we're supposed to have our eyes focused on Jesus, and I, 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 you know, you can't look at the picture of Him 
knocking on the door or hanging on a car. That's not Jesus. That's just somebody's interpretation of that. This is Jesus. Yes. This will make him real. This will this will wake you up to the reality yes. of God. Yes. Amen. So it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. Now this is fascinating because this is what Don was talking about earlier. Command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood, where they stood firm, twelve stones. And you'll carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge tonight or this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God and into the midst of Jordan and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. Praise the Lord. Now look at this. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 9. And think not to say within yourself. Now this is, this is just following the baptism of Jesus. John, or, or just leading up to the baptism of Jesus, I should say. And what's happened is these Pharisees, these scribes, these religious zealots who have no spirit... Just a bunch of rules. They're coming down there to be baptized. They're just wanting to get with the program. Mm -hmm. Take part. And John said, you hypocrites, you liars, you blah, 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 blah. And they said, hey, we're, we're not that. We are the children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And this is John's response. Think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones. Mm -hmm. To raise up children unto Abraham. Mm. Now, I don't know if you're getting the picture here. This is the same place yes. Yes, where they crossed over yes. into across Jordan. And the, this is the memorial. And he says, How, what is he saying? He's saying, if your kids understand the memorial, if they understand what these stones are about, they'll be raised up as children of Abraham. They will become children of Abraham by these stones. God doesn't need you, you lying snakes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. That's what he's saying. This is the same place. So think not to say to yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to, uh, of these stones to raise up children yes, Lord. by the testimony. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Every time we share that with children, with yes. other adults, with whoever it is that don't know, well, that's what he's telling us. By these stones, by these memorials, by these testimonies, by what has happened in your life, by what you're sharing took place back there, you can raise up children to God. You can raise up children to Abraham. You can bring up people. You don't have to have, amen, some quote-unquote miracle. Point them to the stones. Point them to where we came over, to where that water cut back, to where all that stuff back to Adam has been dealt with for you if you'll just cross over. Praise the Lord. This is the scene that Joshua was speaking of. It will come to pass. Your children will say, what's this pile of rocks mean? And you'll tell them. And they will be children of Abraham. Because you're not a children of Abraham because you're a Jew. He told them that. You're a child of Abraham because you believe, because you have faith. You have faith in the testimony that you've received about Jesus Christ. And that's why Hebrews 4 says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us to entering His rest, we would come short of it. We'd fail to receive the testimony and come short 
of crossing over into that reality, into that promise. See, here's the deal. Here's what, here's what Paul is saying to these Corinthians. They have crossed over. Yes. Right? I mean, they're born again because yes. they're in a church. Yeah. But he's telling them there's something else going on here. These people were about to miss their opportunity again to enter the kingdom of God in His promised land called Christ. They were born again, but they didn't have the benefits. These, those people crossed over, but they struggled getting the benefits for a long, long time. In fact, they continued to struggle until Christ. And if these are types and shadows, if these are examples, they're for, our, they're for us yes. to see. You can cross the Jordan. You can get born again yeah. and still not get the promise. Yeah, that's right. not, not the fulfillment of the promise. Not the completed promise. Right. Not, the, right. not the healings. Not the deliverance. Right. Not the prosperity. Not the breakthroughs. Not the long life. Not the children being saved. Right. Not all of those things. You can be born again yourself and make it to heaven, but you'll live like hell all the time you're yeah. here on earth. Because yeah. you can't get your inheritance because you don't believe. Yes. You're not mixing faith with the Word of God. Praise the Lord. So they didn't combine the Word with faith and enter what was offered because of unbelief. The Hebrew, Hebrew itself means, and you can go back to, to when Abraham or Abram was told to come into the promised land. God was going to take care of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, all the ites. <laughs> and what did God say? If you read the scripture, you'll see that word meaning Hebrew. God said that was the first, Abram was the first Hebrew. Not because he was of some particular uh, genealogy, because he was the first, but because he crossed over. That's what Hebrew means. Hebrew means to cross over. Mm -hmm. He was the first to cross over. To believe God and act on what God said, he crossed over. God said, that's a Hebrew. That's the first one. Paul talks about it later. He said, you're not a Hebrew just because you have Abraham as a blood ancestor. The only way you're a Hebrew is if you believe God. Mm -hmm. If you mix faith with the word of God. Yes. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. I'm saying this because this is not as complicated as we've made it. If we just believe, yeah. mm -hmm. if we would just believe in what God has said, we'd experience it. We'd experience far more than we do. And that's what I was talking about with confession. How are you doing? Don't, wait a minute, don't tell me. What's your confession? Because that's what I'm going to hear, whether you're realizing you're confessing or not. We do it all the time. How you doing? And you know what? You know how we are. How you doing? And we just keep on moving because we really don't want to know how, how they're doing. Because we're afraid they're going to tell us. What, what, what we want is, praise the Lord, I'm doing great. I'm blessed. Yeah. So, well, you're just in denial. No, I'm not. <laughs> denial. Okay. Never mind. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Praise the Lord. Is that 323? Galatians 323? Yes. Okay, but okay, all right, all right. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Right? So until until they until this until they were in Christ, so Christ came to heaven. Faith was not existent. Faith didn't exist because they had no faith. They had not the faith of Christ, which is what we have. They were operating strictly by the natural, by what they could see, touch, taste, smell. Right. Okay, so before faith came, before Jesus came, right. they were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, or kept from the faith, that would afterwards be revealed. All right, now look at jo uh, Joshua chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Joshua 6, 5 and 6. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet. Now remember, they're, they've crossed the Jordan. They're, they're near Jericho now. And here's, here's Joshua says that when they make a long, uh, a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people will shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down. 
flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord. So Joshua tells the people, when you hear the blast from the ram's horn, it's time to shout. And the walls will come down. The ram's horn, we've talked about this before as well, is a type or a symbol of the death of a male lamb. You can't get the horns off of the ram unless you kill him. So when they blow the ram's horn, it's signifying that there has been the death of a lamb. Right? Just by definition. You can't be blowing the horn if it's still on his head. Right. And you can't take it off his head unless you kill him. Right. Okay? So whenever you hear the message that comes from the death of the Lamb of God, Jesus, Jesus Christ, you need to expect some walls to come down. Oh. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you have a word from the Lord, you ought to expect that it's going to impact yes. the barriers or the walls or the things that are restricting yes. you or holding you back from the yes. inheritance that God has promised you. Now, I'm talking about healing. I'm talking about all these things because those were tight. But this is the reality. The reality is, by His stripes, I was healed. When I hear that, I ought to be shouting, yes. praise the Lord, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I heard the, the sound of the ram's horn. Amen. And it's testifying to my healing. Yes. Or my financial breakthrough, yes. or my whatever it is that I'm struggling with that I have a promise from God for. Yes. Yes. Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. We are a generation that has crossed over Jordan. Yes. Yes. Been born again. Amen. But the walls have kept us from our inheritance. Yes. Yes. These are examples for us. There's a reason for us to read this. And the reason is that we be not like them. Yeah. Failing to enter in right. to their inheritance, failure to enter in to his rest, Lord. gave them nothing unless they died. Right. Praise right. the Lord. Well, the walls will fall if we'll shout the victory. Yes. If we'll shout agreement with what the Word of God says. Yes. Victory in the finished work of Christ. Yes. See, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. And you look that text up. I've got an interlinear uh, Bible back there. Greek, Hebrew, English interlinear Bible. And in the Greek interlinear Bible, the Greek word for, uh, for that word, for that truth, amen, is Christos. Hearing by the Word of God. That Word of God is translated in the actual... Greek translation, Christos. So faith comes by hearing the word about Christ. Yes. 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 Hmm. yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. 2,000 years into this covenant, and we still got all kinds of Christians, amen, that have crossed the Jordan, amen, and can't hear the ram's horn. Yes. Can't hear the message about Christ. They're settling for everything else. They're settling for religion. They'll settle for a comfortable place where I don't have to hear stuff that I haven't heard before that'll cause me to question my or make me actually think. Because it's just easier to go to church and just be stupid and let somebody else tell me everything. I don't, not, not any of y'all, but I'm just saying it happens. Praise the Lord. Out of bondage and slavery to the law. And into Christ, our promised land, our promised rest. Yes. John chapter 20. I'll just show you how freaky this gets. John chapter 20, verse 11 and 12. See, you can't be afraid to stretch yourself a little bit. And think outside the box because that's, God is not in a box. He never has been, never will be. We try to force Him into one that we can, that we can feel like we can have some kind of understanding or control of. But every time we do that, we, we make Him less God and more human. And He's trying to make us more God and less human. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And she had two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. When Mary went into the tomb of Jesus on the resurrection morning, 
She found the stone rolled away, right? Well, that stone speaks to the law of Moses having been fulfilled. No use for it. And now the stone of the law has been rolled away. Not so that the dead flesh can get out there and act like a fool, but so that the power of the resurrection can be released. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. When Mary stooped down and looked into an empty tomb, she saw an angel. She saw one angel standing at the head and one standing at the foot of where Jesus had lain. That is a picture of the Ark of the Covenant. That's a picture of the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. Exodus 25, verse 18. Hallelujah. This God is in us. Church. Yes. Against whom when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such No, I, I, I want uh, Exodus 25, 18. And thou shalt make two cherubims, angels, of gold. Of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, or at either end of the mercy seat. Yes. Jesus is our propitiation for sin. He is our mercy seat. Yes. Yes. Praise God. What Mary saw when she looked into the tomb was the real ark. Yes. Yeah. Oh. The real ark of the covenant is what she saw. Not a shadow. Not the thing Moses made. He made it after a type in heaven. Out of the reality that was in heaven. You know, the first time the word ark is used, I, was, I, I did a word study on a bunch of this stuff, but the first time the word ark is used in Scripture, it's translated coffin. Amen, I'll show you. The same word for ark is the word coffin. Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. Last chapter of Genesis and the last verse of Genesis. The end of the beginning, you could say. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin. He was put in an ark in Egypt, is what is the way that literally translates. So they translate ark, or excuse me, ark and coffin are synonymous as far as that language is concerned. Wow. All right. So what? Look. All right. Let me. I'll just. Look at Hebrews. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 22. This is Joseph, right? The guy who delivered what would eventually become Israel. The, ch the children of, uh, of Jacob. Yeah. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. In other words, he said, when he was dying, he said, make sure you guys are going to get delivered out of here. Yeah. I know that. And when you are, you make sure you get my bones and take them with you because I want to be there in that promised land. I want to be where God has yes. said it, it belongs to us. I want to be buried in our land, in, yes. in the land of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. So what they were doing was holding this vision of the death of a Savior before the eyes of the people as they left Egypt. They're leaving Egypt and they're carrying... They don't have an Ark of the Covenant. They don't have the, the temple stuff. They don't have any of that because God hadn't given it to them. They've got the body of Joseph, the guy that saved their behinds when they were starving to death, gave them a place to come to to, to escape the, the, the famine and so on and so forth. They're carrying his body out in front of them, and that's what, the, that's what they're doing. There's, there, there's this parade of what they knew to be a Savior leading them out of bondage, leading them out of slavery, leading them out of the, the control Amen of the enemy. Yes. Wow. Praise the Lord. All the way as they're leaving Egypt. Now it's, what happens is all of, the, all of a sudden you start seeing this little thing. Then you see something else. Then you see something else. And you go, what, what, well, that's what that meant. I've read it for 50 years. So I don't know what difference does it make. But it means something. Yes, it, does. it means something because it's talking about Jesus. Yes. It's making it more real. Yes. Amen. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 11. So here's a type. Joseph is a type of Jesus, the Savior. Yes. Forgives his brothers. And they all reject him, right? Yeah. 
They said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us so to carry us forth out of Egypt? What were they saying? Hey, he had a grave. Why didn't you just leave him where he was? We've got to come out here to find a grave. Weren't there any places in, 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 uh, in Egypt that we could have buried him? We could have left him there? Are you seeing what I'm seeing or am I just imagining things? And they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, yeah. we had to drag this dead body across the country? Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Israel complained, you brought us out here to die because there weren't any graves in Egypt. You brought us out here to bring a dead body out here because there wasn't some place he could have stayed buried there. Remember, this is about the same time they're saying, oh, what did God, we were back in Egypt with the, gar the leeks and the garlic. So the bones of Joseph declared there's an empty grave back in Egypt. Praise God. And by faith, Joseph was reaching for a better resurrection. Not just getting dug up and haul my bones over to the promised land. But there's another thing. There's a resurrection coming that's greater than this one. This is just a picture of it. This is just a type of it. So if the ark is a coven, or excuse me, if the ark is a coffin, then you've got to ask yourself, what's in the ark? What's in the coffin? Right? Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 4. Hebrews 9 and 4. So here we're talking about what's in the ark, right? The golden censer. The ark of the covenant overlaid round about. If you go back and read this, it's talking about the uh, holy of holies. What's in there. And so which had the golden censer, which is there, and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Where in it, inside of it, was the golden pot that had the manna. Remember the manna? They had a golden pot they put manna in. Aaron's rod that budded, remember? Yeah. Who's going to be right and who's wrong? Well, we'll put the, bud, the, the, the rods in there. And the one that buds, he's the one that God has chosen. Mm -hmm. And Aaron's rod that budded. And the tables of the covenant, or the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus in this tomb is a picture of the mercy seat and the Ark of the Covenant, then all three of these things should have been found in there. Should have been buried with him. Right? The unbroken tablet of the law in a coffin. And Jesus perfectly fulfilled the law and nailed it to his cross so it could make no legal demands on us. So when God looks at us through the blood shed by Jesus or the blood that was sprinkled on the mercy seat. It's the same as if we had kept every law. Mm. Praise the Lord. Unbroken. The unbroken tablets. Jesus never broke the law. He fulfilled every law. And when God looks at His blood... It's as though he sees the sacrifice blood sprinkled on the mercy seat. And he said, everything's good. Amen. You're righteous. Yes. You haven't broken any law. You've kept every law. I mean, this is amazing, church. God looks at me and says, spotless, perfect, kept every law. Thank you, Lord. Never broke one. Thank you, Lord. Never will break one. Thank you. Praise God. Romans chapter 7, verse 4. This is what threw me before because I, I was thinking, which I don't do a lot of, but I happened to be thinking, and I thought that was the scripture that I was looking at. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also come dead to the law by the body of Christ. Yes. We've yes. become dead to the law. Yes. By the body of Christ. That we should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Yes. Praise the Lord. So the rod of Aaron in the ark, or the coffin, it shows the death of the Levitical priesthood. Yeah. It's replaced by Melchizedek, Jesus, our high priest. Right? Mm -hmm. And God's 
holding back judgment against Israel for rebelling against Aaron. Amen? Their high priest. And Jesus died for our rebellion. Yes. yes Praise the Lord. Jesus. Look at Numbers chapter 17 and verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, or the ark, that's what they're talking about, to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know, if you remember the story, there were people that rose up and said, who, "Who's who's Aaron? I mean, what's why's he got this job as the high priest? I mean, who who made him God over us?" And they're they're murmuring and they're complaining, and a bunch of them died as a result of it. And God said, "Okay, we're going to prove who who is of God and who isn't of God, or who's called here to do this and who isn't." You guys that are rebelling or arguing against Aaron, give me your rod. Yeah. Give me your rod. Give me Aaron's rod. Put him in the ark, and tomorrow we'll look. And whoever's rod buds will be the one that God has chosen. Mm -hmm. And, of course, his rod budded, and that's why they left it in the ark. As a testimony, amen, to this reality. Mm -hmm. Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, before the ark, to be kept for a token against the rebels. And thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. Jesus, praise the Lord, took away our murmurings to God. Our, our denials, our questions, our challenges. Yes. Amen. Bring Aaron's rod again to be kept a token against the rebels. Yes. Praise the Lord. We were all rebels. Yes. But God looks to Jesus and says, I'm not going to know their murmur. I won't remember their murmurings. Oh, Lord. I, I, I'm, I, they're not going to die. Yes. Because I'm going to look at you. Amen. The rod of Jesse is the way it's described in the New Covenant. Okay, so now the golden pot of manna. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Whether they'll be obedient or they won't. So manna was in the ark or the coffin as a memorial that the obedience of Jesus was the only obedience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The obedience of Jesus is the only obedience that would be remembered forever by God. Yes. Not my little bit of obedience over here and all of my disobedience over here. Mm -hmm. The only obedience He looks at is Jesus. Yes. And His obedience is perfect yes, yes. and it's called mine. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. His death would be our propitiation, our mercy seat for our rebellion and our inability to keep the law. Yes. Yeah. That's what that's what Mary saw yes. when she looked in there. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, let's quit with this. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 6 through 16. Well, I'm saying all this. I'm saying all this so that we look, this is true. Yes. It's more than just a fact. Yeah. This is reality. Yes. This is the truth. Yes. And it cannot be hidden. It's so intertwined and so right. interwoven in here. Only God can do this. Yes. It takes us years to find a little thing and we go, yes. oh my God, I know. And for what little bit I've said. 35 years of, uh, of studying and reading and looking at this and praying and all that. And it's just a little thing. Yeah. That's why he says when we get into his presence, we're going to know all things. Can you imagine not being uh, totally spirit when he starts downloading all truth to you? Yeah. Oh, boy. Praise the Lord. Okay. 
I'm going to go 6 through 16. So, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. This goes all the way back to my triangle thing. Yeah. They know so much, but they don't know Sikkim compared to us. Right. They didn't even know He was the Messiah. They didn't even know how God was going to do this. Right. And listen, Satan knows the Word of God. But he has no spirit of God. Right. So it's all intellect. Yes. yes. And that's how Jesus worked against him in the wilderness. Yes. Oh, it says, you know, you can you know, jump off the steeple up here and God won't allow an angel, or the angels won't allow you to dash your foot upon a stone. Jesus said, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're not understanding this at all. Yes. Don't yes. tempt the Lord your God. That's you know? right. yeah. So which one of the princes would have known? But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Right. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, Yes. But the Spirit which is of God, yes. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Yes. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy yes. Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Yes. Right. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, and yet, look at this, himself is judged of no man. Right. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, church, it's, we, we have crossed the Jordan. And it's time that we start shouting, amen, for our inheritance. I don't want to leave here just like a, uh, a Jew that knew a little bit more. I want to leave here a Christian yes. who's one with Christ, who knows his God and has yes. confidence yes. that he will do everything that he said he yes. would do. And I'm telling you, when we get there, we'll have this. The reason we don't have it is because we're not hearing the message of the slain lamb. We're hearing a religious message. We're hearing all kinds of other stuff. And it has kept us from our inheritance. It has literally kept us on the banks on the other side of the Jordan. Not entering into the promises of God. Not getting, amen, houses we didn't build. Lands we didn't plant. Crops we didn't grow. Amen. All the blessings of God. We've got enemies out here. And God said, if you'll trust me, I'll defeat your, I'll have your enemies run in seven ways. If they attack yeah. you one, I'll have them run and tripping over themselves trying to get away from you yeah. seven different ways. Yes. I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to what you can see with your natural eye or what you can understand with your intellect. But anything you can dream up, I already got it for you if you'll just believe it. Yes. Shout! The victory. Praise the Lord. When you hear the sound of the message of Christ, you ought to be shouting hallelujah. You ought to be celebrating and writing down what you've got in Christ. What's yours? What belongs to you? Then you've got something to throw a stone in the Jordan for that next generation. For a child or a grandchild or a great-grandchild or the neighbor down the road or whoever it might be. That look, I've had an experience, buddy, and you can't take that away from me. It's not religion. It's a God who has come to dwell among His people and to dwell in us. And He wants you to understand how much He loves you and how much He's done for you. And He wants you to experience the same thing I've experienced. The same thing that every believer has the opportunity to experience. How do you not, how do you not want that? This isn't about dressing a certain way or acting a certain way or going to certain places or not having this or having some of that. This is about having the very God of glory living inside of you and making you perfect in Christ Jesus. Oh, buddy, who don't want that? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. 
Amen. You're special people. Special people. With a special anointed. An almighty God dwelling inside of you. Every day we ought to get up with a shout. Woo! Praise the Lord. What am I getting today, Lord? And you say, well, that just sounds selfish and, and self-centered. No. I'm, I'm centered on Christ because that's what He's told me. Seek me, my kingdom, and all of these stuff gets added to you. You just get the stuff. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Want my stuff. Praise the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. It's mine. He said it was. Praise the Lord. That was a liar. Yes. Plan your triangle. I'm not listening. I'm not interested. Praise the Lord. Love it. I got the CD. Yeah. Right here in Jesus' name. Give the Lord one more hand. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Go, just go in the truth. Amen. Don't let the devil lie to you. It's all yours. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Have a great day. It's going to be a beauty. In Jesus' name. Amen.